Hi, friends. It's Dustin Coyle again. Like I said, as promised, I'm back. Same day with episode number 21. NFL free agency, let's call it week three. We'll do something like that. Yeah, that sounds all right. I don't know. We'll call it some shit. Well, whenever I put it up, you'll see it. But we're talking about NFL free agency here. On the Intelligent Thoughts podcast, which is all I ever bring you. But, enough about that shit. Let's get into some content, huh? All right, I got all the important stuff in front of me here. I got the Top 101. I got the Mock Draft Central. I got the Best Available Free Agents. I got the recent news from today. Uh, Let's get into it. We'll start with the 101 because it's uh, kind of the easiest way to go about it. What are we looking at here? We already know. I'm not going to tell you the big moves that were made the other day, things that I've already talked about, but I will uh, maybe maybe announce you know some of the stuff when I get into the formulation of the teams and things like that. But we'll start with the number four person on the uh, on the top 101, a Super Bowl hero, somebody that people were worried about, the New England Patriots linebacker, Donta Hightower. Um, <clears throat> Two Super Bowl heroes actually had an incredible tackle on Marshawn Lynch against Seattle, and then he had that forced fumble, sack forced fumble um, this year. Incredible player. Um, people were um, people were wondering if they were going to be able to re-sign him. Uh, you know, New England generally doesn't like to pay a lot of uh, money for players, especially returning players for some reason. He had uh, kind of emerged, though, as one of the better, uh, the blitzing, like an inside linebacker, inside uh, blitzing linebacker uh, in the league this year. And he ended up getting paid, paid as such, uh, staying with New England. Kind of a little bit of a surprise, maybe. Not a major surprise, but uh, four years, $43.5 million, $19 million guaranteed. Uh, almost eleven million dollars a season overall. Kind of, kind of spendy and not, uh, not traditional for New England, uh, the team that you saw just recently trade both Ch- Chandler Jones and Jamie Collins. Um, sign Dante Hightower, uh, who is less highly touted than both of them, but uh, they obviously know what they want. And we move on. But I, I think that's a great pickup. I think it was very important for them to do that, especially considering the the possible, um, uh, you know, loss of Malcolm Butler. I'm looking at Twitter right now. Bleacher Report two hours ago says that the Saints and Malcolm Butler have a framework for a deal in place, which means that a trade uh, could be could be coming up relatively soon. So that's probably an important bolstering of the defense there with Hightower. And uh, also with the Stephon Gilmore, who's the number six uh, player overall, he is going to go to New England. I think it's, you know, Malcolm Butler's probably on his way out there. Uh, Good signing there, though. Good signing. Let's see. Peterson's still available. Number eight player, still available. Uh, I don't know if we talked about this. Terrell Pryor, excuse me, the wide receiver, quarterback, whatever else you want to call it. Um he is signing with the Washington Redskins one year, $8 million. I think that's a pretty good signing. I mean, he has a massive upside. Uh, seeming, you know, he's huge. It seems to be able to learn. He can play multiple positions. He can run the football. He can throw the football, you know, some, and he can definitely catch the ball. Good signing there for uh, Washington, a team that just lost Deshaun Jackson, their deep uh, threat. Signing a dynamic receiver, not quite the same, but definitely a playmaker for sure. So that's good for them. Uh, Don Terry Poe, the Chiefs defensive tackle. Um, kind of Some people thought he was maybe outplayed last year by Chris Jones. Um, Kansas City deciding that maybe it's not so important that they uh, re-sign him. The Atlanta Falcons and Don Terry Poe strike a one-year deal. I don't know what the what the money line is here, but that's uh, that's going to be a good pickup for Atlanta, I feel like. Um, you know, I, I think Poe is still probably better than Chris Jones, but, I mean, everybody has their opinions, and he's still very good either way. I mean, he's obviously he's the number 10 player here on the 101. Definitely going to help out uh, Atlanta um, in the run game and, and probably the pass game a little bit as well. 
All righty. Uh, let's see who else is signed. Jonathan Hankins still available. Uh, that's a good one. Defensive tackle from the Giants. Uh, where else are we at? We already talked about Deshaun Jackson. Three years, $33.5 million uh, with Tampa Bay. Had an explosive offense there with Jameis. Um, obviously, Mike Williams. Uh, Deshaun Jackson, maybe a running back. They're talking about a possible Dalvin Cook or something like that. Damn good team. I, I can't remember. Uh, you know, they have some other players too. But uh, let's see. We move on. That's that's pretty awesome. TJ Lang, uh, the Packers guard. Uh, had a little bit of a hip surgery. It kind of complicated uh, him, but I, I guess he's still ranked the number two guard in the free agency class. Uh, he's signing with Detroit, going across the uh, division there. Three years, going to Detroit. I don't like the move for Lang. I think Lang, I don't know what the money situation was. It doesn't say here, but I don't I don't like the move for Lang. For Detroit, uh, it's a good move. Lang, Lang's been, you know, productive. Um just sort of a an all around good NFC North type player. Not super surprising that he goes to Detroit or Chicago or something like that at all. And how about the Packers keeping somebody number fifteen overall in the one hundred one? Nick Perry, the linebacker. He's coming back to uh, to Green Bay. Uh, he was probably their most consistent pass rusher as out of the linebackers last year. Uh, had a broken hand in the playoffs. Played through that. He's re-signing with Green Bay. They're paying him five years, sixty million dollars, twelve million a year. Um, it's good. I mean, you got to have somebody in the position, man. You got money to spend. Green Bay, uh, they're usually pretty smart with their dollars. I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, pretty good deal overall. Uh, Perry's probably their most valuable defensive player, so I think you probably got to keep him there. All right, and how about this? A rare free agency move. Talking about New England, or talking about shit. Uh, talking about the Green Bay Packers. Um, what I was going to say just a second ago, uh, they, you know, letting Jared Cook go kind of made me a little bit worried. I didn't really understand what the hell that, that was. Um, but, uh, they actually upgraded a little bit. Martellus Bennett, well, maybe they upgraded. I mean, you could, you could argue they're, they're both pretty similar, but Martellus Bennett, uh, is signing with the Green Bay Packers. So they're actually, they fill the hole real quick. Looks like we're looking at a three-year, $21 million deal for Martellus Bennett, a uh, recent Super Bowl champion. like it. I like that move a lot there for Green Bay. <clears throat> for Martellus, maybe I do. Um, I don't hate it. certainly don't hate it, especially if Green Bay can get a running back. Get a great season again out of uh, Aaron Rodgers. It's not bad. Uh, from, I mean, he, he was just playing for a Super Bowl champion, though, so it's sort of a... You know, it, it, depending on what he wants in his life, you know what I mean? It could be better for him to stay, but whatever. Uh, great pickup there for, for uh, Green Bay. Andrew Whitworth, uh, offensive tackle for the Cincinnati Bengals, 35 years old. Um, people thought he was probably going to stay in Cincinnati. The answer is no. Three-year, $36 million deal. Los Angeles Rams. Uh, you got to do something, right? I mean... The Rams' offensive line last year was fucking horrible. When you make Todd Gurley look like shit, uh, I mean, you can tell that you're you're really not good. Quarterback situation is completely disgusting. All of them are better than me, obviously, but it's definitely not the situation that you'd want. Um, but you know, you got to start somewhere. Andrew Whitworth, a great offen- or good offensive tackle here. I think that's a good start. A uh, lot of money to shell out for him though. Twelve million dollars. He's thirty five years old. Three years, twelve million a year. Don't love that. I don't love that amount. But, you know, you got you got a good player there, so that's good. All right, what else? Moving on, moving on. Uh, New England defensive tackle Allen Branch. Uh, what is he, 6'6", 320, bad motherfucker. Um, one of the better... What? One of the better run... Uh, what? The Patriots have not allowed... More than 90 yards. Oh, okay, just last season. I thought it said two seasons. Okay. Yeah, they didn't allow a single running back to go over 90 yards last season. Um, he was sort of the the key piece to that defensive line as far as that was concerned. The good running game. They got another two-year contract. He'll be playing in New England probably until he's 34 years old. Uh, good pick up there for New England. You needed to get uh, somebody. You need to get somebody for that position. And it's, he's huge. I mean, he might even be better than a D- Don Terry Poe. Um, and just kind of overlooked because he plays for New England. It's tough to tell. Where else are we at? Micah Hyde. 
safety cornerback from Green Bay. This is part of the problem in Green Bay. He's bouncing five years, $30 million. Uh, pretty good. I think that's a good amount, especially for a guy that doesn't necessarily rely on speed. He's more of just a playmaker, intelligence sort of a guy. Um, I like that pickup. Five years isn't bad. He's you know, a very non-traditional defensive back. I like that. I mean, I don't, I don't love that, but I mean, I like that as far as long term is concerned. Better than, you know, a speed guy, a Patrick Peterson or something like that, who I love. But, you know, good pick up there for the Bills. Um, they'll need it. Mainly just with New England. Uh, you know, Jets look haggard. Dolphins look pretty good. Who else we got here? Um. I think I already talked about this, but in case I didn't, Chris Baker, uh, skins defensive end. Uh, I think he's like 28, 29. Good defensive lineman for Washington. He's going to be signing a three-year deal with Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay really making a push. They're, they're looking like, you know, uh, if, if uh, Jameis can really emerge, they're looking like a, a bad motherfucking team. Honestly, they're full of talent. I don't know how this... I, I need to look at... What, what's going on? I don't know. They must have just a shitload of money to shell out, though, because they're... They do seem to be signing a lot and, and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, we move on. Ricky Wagner, offensive tackle from Baltimore, going to Detroit. They get TJ Lang. They get Ricky Wagner. Um, <clears throat> good sign, man. You, you give Matt you give Matt Stafford, and plus, especially with the running game, they've had a poor running game for a little bit. Sorry, I had to pause that for a second. Um yeah, good pick up there. Uh, if they can get their running game going, and uh, if they can keep Matt Stafford upright, they, uh, you know, that's definitely going to be the move. They were overachieving this year. You know, they could possibly sneak into the playoffs there and uh, and do some do some real damage if they, if they can get a uh, healthy Stafford throwing it around. Cowboy safety, uh, Barry Church uh, leaving. Uh, basically the best season of his career, leaving Dallas. He's going to be going to Jacksonville. Another team, man, Northern Florida, really making strides. Both Jacksonville, Calais Campbell, uh, Aboye, Barry Church. That defense is getting ruckus. Um, and then, you know, Tampa Bay, like we were just talking about, both of those teams, those are the two best teams in uh, Florida, honestly. And the Miami Dolphins are a pretty good team, but I think both of those teams are on the upswing, especially if Bortles can, can pull along become the player they thought they had two years ago. And, and you know, everybody's trying to give up on him right now. I don't think that that necessarily has, that doesn't have to be the case. He's young. Um, he's a, he's athletic, you know. I, you know, I think that uh, Bortles can do quite well. That Jacksonville team looks good, you know, better than the Indianapolis team in the same division. Um, depending on what Houston does at quarterback, I mean, I guess, I don't know. They're probably about, a, probably, well, I don't know, maybe a little better than Houston, assuming Houston doesn't get a good quarterback. If they get Romo, Houston's definitely the best team there. Uh, and then Tennessee, you know, they're Tennessee's pretty damn good too. Yeah, they, they might be better. But, uh, man, that AFC South, it's, it's shaping up to be actually a pretty damn good division. With ten, Tennessee being my AFC team, uh, I like where they're headed as well. Yes, I have an AFC team. I think we already might have, might have talked about this before. Kenny Britt, um, the first 1,000-yard receiving season in 10 years for a Rams receiver. He is bouncing. He's going to Cleveland. Four years, $32.5 million. That's crazy to me. For the team, a team that couldn't re-sign Terrell Pryor for one year, basically they're paying this person the same amount of money, a slightly more than Terrell Pryor is getting for one year. They're paying him for four. Uh, Terrell Pryor, Kenny Britt, both of them are good. I actually think Terrell Pryor is the player you'd rather have. I think this is a mistake. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a mistake to bring him in, but I think it's a, a mistake to, to bring him in uh, instead of... Terrell Pryor. I would rather have, you know, some sort of a combination of the two. Of course, quarterback is a fucking problem there. We'll see how that pans out. They're not expected to take a quarterback in the draft. 
they're expected to take uh, you know the consensus number one overall pick, Miles Garrett, the defensive.